All right, y'all, welcome to the second lesson. Let's go straight out to the point. Sharp, sweet, small lecture, but straight out to the point so you know what I'm talking about. At this point, we're starting off on descriptive statistics. Remember, descriptive are the ones that are used to describe the data. So, the most basic descriptive statistic that exists out there is the frequency distribution. But I want to tackle on a couple things. First thing is, why a frequency distribution? So, when you collect data from a group of people, you're going to plug in the data spread out like that. So say those are the grades for the first exam of five students. Like that. It doesn't look that bad right now because it's only five grades. But when you have, say, uh, grades from 100 people, you can just leave them like that. It's going to look super messy. You want to find a way so you can put up the numbers to describe the data, but in a more nicely looking way, in a more ordered way. So this is what the frequency distribution does for you. First thing is, N, in case you don't know, N stands for sample size. There's a difference between lowercase n and capital case N. Lowercase n is for the sample. Capital, uppercase n, I'm sorry, is for the population. So you can see here we have five grades. So in this example, it's going to be n out of five. All right, because we have five grades. So the frequency distribution is super simple, super, super simple. It's just a matter of putting the numbers from highs to lows. OK, now that being said, let's actually put it on the, on the actual graph. So super, super simple, S simple stuff in the world, in the world. The thing is, what I notice very often is the most common mistake the students make is that they begin putting up the lowest number at the top. So watch out. When you try to describe the data like that, you always want to begin with the highest number on top. So in this case, the highest number is 10. So 10 is going to go on the top. It's going to be a 9. It's going to be an 8. It's going to be a 7. So the frequency is just the italicized F. And it's just telling us how many times they have compared to the rest of the, of the numbers that you have available. So super, super simple. 10 happens once. You don't see no other 10, so it's 1 and 1. So you're going to place a 1 here, because it only happened one time. 9 happened only once, so it's going to be a 1 here. 8 happened two times, it's going to be a 2 here. It's going to be a 7 half a 1. And you have that there. Then this is going to be again n equals to 5. This is what you want to see, right? The relative frequency is asking how many times did it happen divided by all the other numbers that were available. But this is now asking for uh, a fraction, not a fraction, I'm sorry, uh, a percentage, a decimal. So 10 happened once in five, it's only one 10 in five numbers that were available. So if you divide one by five, it's gonna give us a 0.20. If you divide one by five with a nine, it's gonna give us a 0.20. If you divide a 2 by 5, because 8 happened two times, then you're going to have a 0.40. And then 1 and 5 is going to give us a 0.20. If you add all of this up, it should equal to a 1. Notice how it's looking now much more organized. It looks a little bit more beautiful, right? The cumulative frequency, at this point, you're going to now shift your interest to starting at the bottom. The cumulative frequency is asking how many times did it happen at that point and below it, at that point and below it. You want to begin at the bottom, the cumulative frequency, how many times did seven happen? It happened only once, so seven is going to go here. The next thing is, how many times did eight happen? But not only eight, you're interested also in how many scores were below. So how many times did eight happen? And also how many numbers were below eight? So we have one, two, three. So the cumulative frequency here is going to be at three. The next number is a 9, and our interest again is not only knowing how many 9's happen, but also how many numbers are below 9. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4. And lastly, at the top, we're going to have n. So it's 10, which happened once, plus all the numbers below, we're going to give us a 5. The cumulative frequency is not that interesting. The main thing is the percentile. Percentile comes with a p. Percentile is super important. Write it down. Percentile showing you in a percentage how many times the number happened at that point or below it. 
when you ask for a percentile, it's trying to give you a number for where you stood compared to the rest of the population. <clears throat> How many times did the number happen at that point or below it in a percentage? So, what you're going to do is you're going to take this number, you're going to divide it by the n, by 5, and you're going to multiply that number by 100 so it can give you a percentage. So, 1 divided by 5, or 0.20 by 100, this is 20%. In the population, you can technically say that 20% of the population that took this had a 7. In the 8th, you're going to take the component frequency, divide it by 5, and multiply it by 100. So if you divide 3 by 5, it's going to give you 0.60, multiply by 100, 60%. And then the next one is going to be 80%. And then all the way to the top is where you have 100%. The main interest in the percentile main 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 interest in the percentile is knowing um, if I took an exam and I get a 9 my interest is compared to the population how good did I do a percentile is trying to tell me that so if I take a test and I get a 90 a 9 I'm sorry I'm saying I did better than 80% of those who took the test that's what the percentile is trying to give you which is a very valuable, valuable piece of information, especially when you have a large set of data. Say, not only do you have five students, but you have like a hundred thousand students taking a test. You're given an SAT test, you have a hundred thousand students. Um, you're going to only admit students that are in the 90th percentile, and that kind of point is going to be the one that will tell you, okay, this is the number of students that are going to be being taken in, and it's the student that got this specific grade. Percentiles are very, very informative. Now, there's some way that you can calculate a percentile strictly by, by using another formula without having all this, without having to do all this. So now, to summarize it, there's a different way in which you can get those numbers without having to do the whole frequency distribution. Right now, this example is very simple because we only have five numbers, but when you have hundreds and hundreds of numbers, of course, it's much more messy. So. If you don't want to do the whole frequency distribution and you want to find a percentile or you want to find a specific raw score, specific number, um, you can just use those two formulas. It's super, super simple. The only thing that we got to know is what is I. I stands for index. Index is the position where a number falls. If you notice, it's the same five numbers, but I have put them in order. So index is a position. So this is position one. Again, from lowest to highest at this point, position 1, position 2, position 3, position 4, position 5. Let's say that I'm interested in knowing what is the percentile of 9 without having to do the whole frequency distribution. What I can do here is 9 is going to be in the index of 4. It's in the position of 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So I'm going to plug the 4 here. N is a 5, so I'm going to plug the 5 here, so it's going to be 100, multiplied by 4, over 5. So, one last thing to know, one last thing that I want you all to know, and we'll finish up with this, super, super simple. What if I have a specific percentile in mind? What if not knowing Either of this data, I'm interested in knowing based on the large set of data, assuming that it's like a large set of data, I have a percentile of a mine of 80%. What is going to give me an 80%? So at that point, we're going to use the other formula. If I'm interested in say 80%, this asterisk stands for multiplication. So what I'm going to do is say that I'm interested in 80. I'm gonna, point 80, I'm sorry. I'm gonna multiply this by five, that is the number of people that I have, and it's gonna give me a four. Notice how this other formula is giving me an index. So I get a four, what I have to do then, go in here, one, two, three, four. And my answer, 
my raw score is a nine. Depends on what is your interest is the type of computation that you would use. If you just want to describe all the data, then you do the frequency distribution. If you specifically are interested in one number, maybe it is you want to know some, some percentile of a specific number in the raw score, in the raw scores, then you use this formula. Or specifically, you want to look out for a specific number in the raw score based on a percentile that you have in mind, then you use this other formula. Different tools that you may use for different purposes. Make sure that you review this, and then I'm looking forward to your homeworks. Good work.